Hey there guys, welcome back to another video. So today we'll be taking a look at the Surface Pro X. So this video is geared towards students and artists, and I was able to use the Surface Pro X to wrap up the last three weeks of classes. So I will be going over on how the Surface Pro X held up in the classroom and at home. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I was really hoping for a Black Friday sale on the Surface Pro X. A discount on this would have definitely helped encourage more people to try it out. So the Surface Pro X comes well packaged and it's only available in black and the keyboard is also only available in black. So you don't have the variety of color choice you get with the Surface Pro 7. It comes with a powerful 65 watt charger that will charge it rapidly and some paperwork. The keyboard will run you an additional $139 and the pen a whooping $144 but you can get them in a bundle for $269 which saves you a few dollars, about $14. So this will be a pretty expensive tablet to get with the keyboard and pen. I have been a fan of the Surface Pro lineup since I first tried out the Surface Pro 4 in 2016. Since then, I have been waiting for the day that they went with the 13 inch display on the Surface Pro. Now here it is in the all new Surface Pro X and I love the design. I wish they had this design treatment on the Surface Pro 7 as well. I really hope they do it to the Surface Pro 8 or whatever they call it. Taking a closer look at the Surface Pro X, it is very thin and has rounded corners which makes it look very appealing and it weighs as much as the Surface Pro 7 at 1.7 pounds while having a slightly larger footprint. I like that they finally went with USB Type-C. The Pro X comes with two USB Type-C ports on the left here that output audio and can also charge the tablet. So I can now use my USB Type-C flash drive with this tablet so that is a plus for me. The 13 inch display looks really good with the slim bezels and it still retains the 3 to 2 aspect ratio so you will have some black bars when watching videos and movies. The display gets very bright and the viewing angles are good. You get an enhanced mode that makes the colors pop just a little more. You will probably want to stick to sRGB if you would do any kind of photo editing or drawing on this tablet. The Surface Pro X has been a joy to use in class. I absolutely enjoy taking notes with it. The bigger display makes it better to put my ebook on one side and one note on the other. I had a little bit more room than I did with the Surface Pro 6. The Surface Pro X is not much bigger than my previous Surface Pro 6 or the Surface Pro 7, so it didn't take up any more room than the Surface Pro 6 did on my desk. I hardly use the keyboard when using it in the classroom because I use the pen to write on the tablet and the virtual keyboard whenever I needed to type something. So I would just remove the keyboard, I would turn it around and reattach it so I didn't scratch the back of the Surface Pro X when I laid it on the desk. You can also just swing the keyboard back but then you have a higher chance of getting the keyboard dirty. If you will be using the keyboard in class you might find the trackpad to be a little loud. It is louder than the Surface Pro 6 or Surface Pro 7. It might just be my unit but this will definitely be heard in a quiet classroom. Something else that I noticed is that the cursor speed feels a little slow even after I set it to the max speed, which is not a huge deal, but it could use some improvement. I find the keyboard to be comfortable to type on, and I can type on it efficiently, and it's still a badly keyboard with 5 levels of brightness. The Surface Pro X is great if you only use the Office apps like OneNote, Word, PowerPoint, and Excel, as well as surfing the web and watching videos. Like for example, I use this to work on my physics project, I use OneNote to show the work behind our solutions, use Excel to take down the data, then transfer the graphs to PowerPoint for a group presentation. Now if you have to write a report on it, you can just pull up Word and start writing your report there. The tablet had no issues on keeping all of these apps open at the same time, being put to sleep, and waking up immediately to where I left off the next day. So it worked great for that. If you want the smoothest experience, I recommend putting it on best performance and taking a hit on battery life. Taking notes with the Surface Slim Pen doesn't feel uncomfortable, I can jot down my notes just as well as I did with the Surface Pro Pen. I can easily flip the pen around to erase with the back end and then flip it back again to start writing. The Slim Pen still offers the shortcuts that the Surface Pen did with Bluetooth. You can still press the eraser button, double press it and press and hold to launch your command. I have mine set to launch one note on a double press and take a screenshot on a single press, a long press will open my sticky notes. And this is what has worked best for me. So the writing has felt very smooth, I have used it on my 2 and 3 hour class and have no complaints using it. The slim pen is comfortable to hold and my index finger can easily press the side button which functions as a select tool to move things around in OneNote. The tip on the slim pen is a little hard so I got a tempered glass for the Surface Pro X since I felt like it would create micro scratches on the display. Since I got my tablet early on, there weren't many tempered glass that had a perfect fit on the Surface Pro X. Mine covered part of the speaker cutout, but it did the job. I would have loved if the Surface Slim Pen used interchangeable nibs like the Surface Pro Pen does. The hard triangular tip is great for tilt shading, but sometimes a thinner nib is preferable to create more precise lines. The Slim Pen is fine for writing and drawing, but it's just a preference of mine. Now going on to drawing on the Surface Pro X. The Surface Pro X is great for drawing with its large screen, although not all drawing apps are supported on here. I tried on Sketchable and it was very smooth on here. There was very low latency. 
I did a quick body sketch and it felt very responsive. I didn't have any discomfort while drawing with the slim pen, so it's great for quick sketches. If you're going to buy this to use as your drawing canvas, then you will have to check if your preferred drawing program is supported on the Surface Pro X because not all are. My favorite drawing app is Sketchbook, but you can't download the Sketchbook app from the Windows Store. You will have to search for the 32-bit version to download. And if you want to use Photoshop on this to draw with, you will also have to download the 32-bit version, and that one limits the amount of RAM that it can use. My to-go app for drawing is Sketchbook, so I went ahead and downloaded the 32-bit version that I found online, and the link is below in the description if you want to try that out. So the application worked okay, it doesn't come with the cool pen feature where it only lets you draw with the pen and move with your fingers, which was a bit annoying for me when I would try to move around. It would make lines on my drawings randomly, so I would have to hit undo multiple times because it happened very often. So I went ahead and put a timeless of me drawing Gogeta on here while I talk about my experience while drawing on the Surface Pro X. So I accidentally erased the beginning of my drawing, thinking that I had already transferred it to my PC because my SD card was running low on storage. So that is why I started off halfway through my drawing. When I first saw the Surface Pro Slim Pen being announced, I was very skeptical at first on how comfortable the Slim Pen would be. But I was surprised that it wasn't as uncomfortable as I'd expected it after hours of drawing with it. The Surface Slim Pen still has a jittery effect when drawing slow lines, but it has improved over the Surface Pro 6. The pressure sensitivity still remains the same with 4096 levels of pressure. Applying pressure on the Surface Slim Pen feels about the same as with the Surface Pro Pen to me. You can adjust the sensitivity in the Surface app. I tend to keep it at level 4 when I'm writing on OneNote and change it to a level 7 when I'm drawing. One hour into my Gogeta drawing and I had no complaints about the comfort. Where I can see someone having discomfort with this pen is if you tend to grasp your pen tightly. You will get some indentations from the narrow side of the pen on your thumb which might cause some discomfort after long hours of drawing. For $144, I don't see anything special about the Surface Lamp pen that makes it better than the Surface Pro pen that you can get for around $80. You will be better off with the Surface Pro Pen if you want to save some money and you'll get the same performance. Plus, the battery on the Surface Pro Pen will last you about 10 months and you don't have to worry about changing it anytime soon. Sure, wireless charging on the pen is cool and all, and being able to put it away in the keyboard is also nice, but my suggestion to you is to wait until the price goes down if you really want to get this pen and keyboard. So if you will be using the Surface Pro X mainly to write on it with OneNote like I am, and for classwork, then I strongly recommend buying the Surface Pro Pen. Unless you don't mind the high price tag of the Surface Slim Pen, then that is a good option too. I still prefer the render feel of the Surface Pro Pen, and not just because it's cheaper. Now moving on to the battery. What I love about the Surface Pro X is that it now charges on a 65W charger, meaning that it can charge faster than the Surface Pro 6. The Surface Pro 7 also uses the same 65W charger, which is pretty cool. The Surface Pro X takes about an hour to reach 80%, which is awesome. What I also like is that it can be charged through the USB-C port. It can take in as much as 45 watts through the USB-C. The Surface Pro 7 on the other hand is limited to 25 watts through the USB-C port. So for me, this is exciting because I can still use my 45 watt portable power bank to keep the Surface Pro X charged when there's no outlets nearby. Plus I no longer need to carry the extra cable that I needed to to charge the Surface Pro 6 with my power bank. I can now use any USB-C cable that I have which is great. As for the battery life, Microsoft claims a 10 hour of battery life which is less than other laptops using an ARM processor. In my usage, I've gotten about 7 hours of battery life just taking notes on OneNote and doing homework on it as well as watching videos. This isn't a huge improvement compared to the 6 hours I got on my Surface Pro 6, but it definitely helps. I really love the fact that I can charge it on my power bank and use the 45 watt delivery on it. So after getting my hands on the Surface Pro X, it was tough going back to the 12.3 inch display of the Surface Pro 7. The Surface Pro X is a great laptop for the right people. For those who will only be surfing the web using office apps like Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, and to those who want to stay connected to the internet without the need of a hotspot. The Surface Pro X has a very attractive design, but the price is a little too high when you compare it to the Surface Pro 7, which you can get with a bundled keyboard for a price less than the Surface Pro X tablet by itself. So with that, it makes it very difficult to recommend. It's a great design and I love what Microsoft is doing. And I hope to see great performance improvements on their second gen and I will definitely be waiting to try that out. Alright, so this concludes today's review. Thank you all for watching. Leave a like if you found the video helpful. Subscribe to stay tuned for more tech related videos. And I will talk to you on the next one.